Hi, this is Terence Wu, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and in this video, I'm going to go through how to create a forming tool. Forming tools are neat features that are available when working with sheet metal in SolidWorks. The default design library has some sample tools to choose from, and they're really easy to use. Simply drag and drop the forming tool onto your sheet metal part. You can set the direction and angle, and click the Position tab to adjust the location of the insertion point. Click OK, and the tool shapes the sheet metal. Let's take a closer look at the countersink emboss forming tool that we just used. The shape that's imprinted into the sheet metal is simply defined by the geometry and colors. Notice the red face corresponds to the hole that was created when the tool was used. Also, I want to point out the SLD PRT file extension. This is just a regular SolidWorks part file. So how do we create our own forming tools? The process to do this is fairly straightforward, but there are some key things to be aware of. Step one is to create the geometry for the forming tool. I've got something simple here, just a couple of extrude features. Once we have our geometry, we classify the faces using colors. The easiest way to do this is by inserting a forming tool feature, which is found under Insert Sheet Metal. The Property Manager is looking for a stopping face selection and optionally faces to remove. I'll set the bottom as my stopping face, select this face on top to be removed, and use the origin as the insertion point. When I click OK, the tool colors the faces cyan, red, and yellow. At this point, I can save the file and the forming tool will be ready to use. When I save, I have two options. I can save it as a regular SLD PRT part file, like the countersink emboss we looked at earlier, or I can save it as an SLD FTP form tool file. The only difference between the two file types is how they can be organized in the design library. I'll save this file to this test folder, and I'll save it twice, once as a part file, and once as a form tool file. Now let's try to use these files. I'll start with the SLD FTP form tool file. Drag and drop. Looks good. But when I try to use the SLD PRT part file, SolidWorks gets confused. The problem is this file is not being recognized as a forming tool, and that makes sense since it's a regular part file. However, we saw that the emboss worked as a regular part file. This is because it was located in a forming tools folder which flags the part files inside to act as forming tools. Notice that there's a special icon for forming tools folders. It's easy enough to set a folder as a forming tools folder. Simply right click and ensure that the option is checked. The icon will update the next time SolidWorks is restarted, but I can immediately start using the regular part file as a forming tool. So that's the difference between the two file types. Form tool files always work as forming tools, but part files only work as forming tools if they're located in a forming tools folder. Now I want to go back and mention a couple more details about creating the tool geometry. We often want to include radii like these so that the result has a smooth fillet. The easiest way to do this is to add a base. We can then add a regular fillet and then cut away the base. Also, when you don't want to remove an entire face, the split line tool can be used to separate a particular region which can be selected when defining the forming tool feature. When we use this tool, we see that only the smaller circle is removed, and we get fillets instead of sharp corners. The one rule to be aware of is that the fillet radius must be larger than the thickness of the sheet metal. So to recap, start by creating the geometry for your tool, adding fillets and split lines if needed. Then, 
Insert a forming tool feature to define the stopping face, faces to remove, and insertion point. Lastly, save your tool either as a part file or a form tool file. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and let us know. And subscribe to our channel for more SolidWorks tips. Thanks for watching.